Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. Um, previous lecture uh, was dedicated to spherical caps, and uh, I was discussing the volume. Um, now, uh, one of the very rare occasions when I can say that certain mathematical properties can have a direct um, implication onto reality is um, that the surface, the top surface of the spherical cap, which I call a dome, is something which people do see in architecture, in cathedrals, for instance. And obvious um, question is, what's the area? I mean, for instance, you have to cover it with something and you have to know how much material you have to, to have. So, um, to satisfy this practical implementation, I would like to discuss today a surface of the dome of the uh, spherical uh, cap. However, before doing that, um, I would like to introduce spherical sector first and its volume, and then I will show how easily I can get the surface of the dome from volume of uh, a spherical sector. In some way it will be uh, very much like uh, getting a surface of a sphere from its volume. If you remember, I was using certain um, technique which I will use exactly the same thing uh, today. Okay, so what is a spherical volume, a uh, spherical sector, sorry? Well, if you have a sphere, now my artistic abilities will definitely be challenged here. Now, if this is um, a cap, spherical cap, which is the result of cutting the plane, then this is a spherical sector. It contains the cap from the top and a cone on the bottom. So when the cone actually meets the, uh, the, uh, the, the cap, you have this circle which is an intersection between the plane, plane and, and, and the sphere. Now, this is a very small uh, addition to our spherical cap. So all I have to add, if I want to, to, to calculate the volume, uh, I have to add the, the cone. Now I know that um, this cone is a right circular cone. The radius of the cone, let's call it L, L square is equal to uh, Pythagorean theorem. This is R, so it's R square minus, and this piece is the radius minus the height of the cap, right? So I know that. Now, the altitude of this cone is basically R minus H, right? So, the volume of the cone is equal to uh, one-third pi L square. That gives me the area of the base of the cone times its altitude, which is this. And if I will substitute L square here, I will get the volume of the cone is equal to one-third pi. Uh, if I will open the parentheses, it will be 2 uh, rh minus h square, right? Because r square and r square will, will cancel out each other. So it's minus 2 rh, so it's plus because there is a minus, and then plus h square, which is minus because... Okay. So instead of L square, I will substitute this. 
two R H minus H square times R minus H and I can open parentheses and see what happens. Um, by the way, H can go outside. So the volume of the cone is equal to one third pi H. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> okay, I will have two R minus H times R minus H. Okay? And that would be equal to one third by H two R square minus H R uh, minus 2hr plus h square, right? Which is one third by h two uh, r square minus three h r plus h square. Okay, that's my formula for the volume of the coal. Now. If I want the volume of a sector, I have to add the cap, right? Now, the volume of the cap from the previous lecture was, I have it written somewhere, one third pi h square three r minus h. Yeah, that was the previous lecture. Now, the volume of sector is equal to some of these, right? So, uh, one third pi h uh, 2 r square minus 3 h r plus h square now I have only one h outside of the parentheses so it should be plus 3 h r and minus h square which is what? 3HR, 3HR, H square, H square. And the final volume is very simple formula. 2 third pi R square H. See, after all these very uh, unpleasant kind of formulas, the result for the sector is really very nice and short formula which shows that the sector is well I would say well you know there is a I, I think uh, Einstein was one of the people who had beauty as a criteria for for truth of the hypothesis or something like this or theory well so the nice formula actually signifies that this is a very natural kind of um, geometric figure. All right. Um, now, what we have to do now is, I promised you to calculate the area of the dome, this area. Now, if you remember the way how I did it with volume of the sphere and the surface area of a sphere, I have suggested to cover the dome with uh, polygons, very small polygons, which are approximating, they are like inscribed into this, um, into this dome. So let's say I have chosen a certain number of points here and connected those points with uh, 
uh, segments. Like every three points, I connect with a really small triangle, right? So every three neighboring uh, uh, points are connected with a triangle, and then every point I connect to uh, to a center. So a triangle and a center give me the uh, uh, triangle pyramid. Now, if I will increase the number of points, my triangles will be smaller and smaller and they will approximate the area of the dome tighter and tighter. Now, if I want to calculate the volume of all the um, triangular uh, pyramids, I have to do what? I have to summarize one-third uh, area of the uh, pyramid's base times its height. Now the height will be closer and closer to R, right? So that's like a constant. And some of all these areas of the pyramids will go to the area of the dome, right? So the volume of the sector is equal to one third area of the dome times radius. So that's the formula which I have not proved but from the intuitive considerations um, which I have just explained, this is the right formula. Okay? Now, from this formula and knowing what is the volume of the sector, which is 2 3rd pi r square h, I can derive that the area of the dome of the uh, sector or, or spherical cap, whatever you want to say, is equal to I have to divide by R, third one third here and here disappears. So it's two pi R H. So if you are a Michelangelo or whoever else was building cathedrals some time ago that's your formula for calculating the area of a dome if you know the radius and the height of this cap on the top. Well, I do suggest you to uh, repeat all these calculations yourself independently. Uh, I mean, you can look at the notes uh, to, uh, to uh, lecture. And uh, it's a good exercise. And again, considering you have such concise formulas it just signifies that everything is right, according to this theory of beauty. So thanks very much for your attention and good luck.